and welcome to the TR Business video channel. I'm here with John Baumgartner, who is the Director of Sales for In-Flight and Catering for Gerbruder Heinemann. Welcome and thank you for joining us here. Thank you. My really pleasure appreciate you taking your time thank out of you. your busy schedule. Uh, first of all, I want to address the in-flight retail channel as a whole. Um, we all know that it has been struggling in, in recent years, uh, but there was a light at the end of the tunnel, perhaps in 2017, where there was at least some, some positive growth. Uh, I think it was around 3%. Um, I just wanted to know what you feel about that sort of performance in the context of growing passenger numbers, uh, but also in the context of in-flight retail's performance over the last sort of five to ten years. Yeah, I think it's an interesting question. Yeah, it's, it's great that we have some Mm -hmm. light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I'm sometimes a little bit, um, I don't want to call it cynical, maybe pragmatic, that uh, I, I always, when I hear numbers like this, where do they first come from? Mm -hmm. what, what is the source? Um, how are, have they been compiled to these three point or four mm -hmm. point percentage? Is it growth uh, in, in total numbers? Yes, probably. Is it growth in relation to the passenger growth? Maybe not, mm. um, and and then we'll come to into it. I'm sure, but mm. there, there it's very different development from regions to regions, from airlines to airlines, from uh, brands, uh, from product categories to mm. others, and so forth. So um, I take those um, those numbers with, uh, as we say in Swedish, "enny mm basalt." -hmm. You, you know, you don't take them. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Good. Uh, seems to be a little bit excitement back in the in the mm -hmm. channel, but um, careful excitement. Yes, yeah. let's let's move ahead with cautious, cautious optimism. Yeah. Um, you've been in the in-flight business for a number of years. I think you'd be happy to admit. 16, 17, something mm, like that. Just a couple. Yeah. So, and and we've spoken numerous times about the inefficiencies, uh, well, the inefficient business model, I should say, of the in-flight retail channel. Uh, since you've been involved, have you seen any improvement? Have you seen anywhere where you, know, you could say this is a good start and we can move from here or is it just the same? Um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I used to work in, in Sweden with uh, what then was in-flight service uh, where I would argue still is the most efficient pre-order mm -hmm. retailer within airlines worldwide. Um, and of course, uh, over the 15 years I was there, there was great development in all mm. parts of the business, uh, in particular in the pre-order business, mm. from the assortment to the assortment width to analyzing the assortment width to uh, from going to quite simple catalogs to absolute really mm. high-class catalogs uh, to the production, how we were packing goods in the stores, uh, storage and, mm -hmm. and delivering to the aircraft, to the websites, to the whole digital, what, what was introduced in what, early 2000 something. Mm -hmm. So the, a great development in some areas. Mm -hmm. And then I can see, say that um, I can today, in my role with Heinemann, I can go out to some of the catering stations uh, or look at some of the magazines or, or see some of the processes that we or the industry use to, uh, to define an assortment or to pack a trolley or to whatever. And it's not better than it was 15 years ago. So in some areas, in again, some airlines, some stations, some uh, retail concepts developed great, but there are quite a lot of inefficiencies uh, out there still, mm -hmm. I would argue. We've talked recently uh, about, well you mentioned that there was pressure on, on, on or perhaps uh, too keen a focus on increasing sales and not looking at you know, increasing efficiencies for instance and that's obviously part of the role that you, you play at Heinemann. Tell us a bit more about why you think that part is sometimes perhaps more important or as important. <coughs> My role at Heinemann, Heinemann in, in the airline in-flight channel, we are a distributor, a mm -hmm. wholesaler, so we don't get involved in the retail offering, mm -hmm. the, the business to consumer um, at, at all. So, um, and, of, and I understand and I totally respect and, and uh, embrace that we should all be looking at increasing sales, mm -hmm. whatever, however we can do that, with good assortments, good brands, uh, uh, 
um, good prices, offers, promos, crew train, whatever. Um, I just want to always come back to that we need to do that in the context of doing it right and doing it efficiently, doing it with good processes and so forth. Because the airline channel is a channel that uh, is very costly if mm -hmm. you do it wrong. Uh, there are a lot of uh, everything from getting the forecast wrong where you will have no stock or too much stock or mm -hmm. the di distribution uh, to, to many bonds across Europe or wherever you work uh, to, to how products are packed and how the products are handled in the trolleys or by crew and to how do they look when they they're, uh, at the end of the day when, when the catalog comes off the plane of course the trolleys have to come off the plane and all the products come back in return mm -hmm. what can we do with all of that so, so we have to find good assortments, uh, niche brands, uh, exciting promotions, all of that. But we need to keep in mind that uh, we need to manage the complexity mm -hmm. that that sometimes can uh, drive. Mm -hmm. And of course, some are better than others at managing uh, all of this. And, you know, I don't want to draw too much negative focus, but there are, of course, perhaps some unethical practices uh, amongst some in the industry. And of course, there isn't really um, a higher authority, should we say, at this point uh, that can be called upon to perhaps look into these matters. Because we know there's an awful lot of suppliers out there that haven't been happy. Um, with some relationships they've had, and we're not here to, to name names at this stage. But you know, what, what's your view on that, and the need to sort of have these, some of these instances looked at into more detail and prevent them from happening in the future? Um, yeah, you're, it's correct that there has been um, various channels or cases where mm -hmm. uh, maybe everything is not handled completely by the book. However, I think that today, uh, at least in Europe, and from mm -hmm. a European context, which I'm more comfortable to comment on, I think that most of that is gone. We, mm -hmm. are, we are done with... Uh, there are um, bigger um, processes in place to secure mm -hmm. that this doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. Everyone is, uh, have a bit better control of their... Mm -hmm. everything from stock to transactions to, to whatever. And, and so I think that uh, that part is probably not uh, such a big problem mm -hmm. anymore, well, at least from a European context. Sure. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah, the, there has been mm -hmm. some cases. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Um, moving now on to actually uh, the food and beverage side of the business. We've seen in recent years a lot of concessionaires pivoting their businesses away from uh, retail perhaps and, and moving into food and beverage or trying to perhaps absorb that business too uh, rather than having two companies working um, in flight. Tell us about the opportunity in, in food and beverage, obviously catering as well as actually selling the products on, on the plane. Yeah, I mean uh, we've seen a number of airlines move away from free food uh, drinks mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to maybe even giving out the, the small, small snacks to taking that totally off, mm. moving into retail, uh, selling food and, and drinks, uh, which makes good sense from a lot of perspectives. People, uh, when the food offering, drink offering is good, it's a great place to have your lunch, your dinner, whatever, you know, depending mm -hmm. on when you fly. Uh, of course, you have a practical problem then if you introduce that and if you were to have a, a um, travel retail or boutique offering on board, um, you can't really, from a practical perspective, have two retailers on mm -hmm. board with two systems, two catalogs, to all of that. So uh, it needs to be probably done by one in most cases, and I think we're moving there. Mm. And I know that there are still some out there where there is actually two retailers on board moving away from that. I don't think that that's efficient going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the question becomes that is uh, food and um, beverage uh, offering the buy on board um, more important uh, from what the customer wants or a passenger and also from a profit perspective from the airline? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, um, in many cases, yes. Mm -hmm. And will then that uh, take over and push out the boutique even more? And we know also some airlines have discontinued and mm. are considering discontinuing the, the boutique. 
I wanted to actually touch on that while you while you're there. How, as you rightly say, some airlines have decided to delist or sorry remove the retail component from their in-flight uh, because they say that they don't believe that the, the business is profitable. Do you believe that to be uh, too much of a generalisation and an unfair perception of the of the business? No, I, I I've said it many times and I say it again. I think that. Uh, when you do it right, mm -hmm. at least for most airlines, it, it will be a good, profitable business model. Mm -hmm. uh, there, coming back to what I said earlier, mm -hmm. that, that means everything from the, you know, the processes, how you set up an assortment to, to actually getting it and all the steps in between, getting it on board and selling it to the crew and all of that, including returns or minimizing returns, uh, all of that. It can be a good, um, uh, profitable income for mm -hmm. almost all airlines. Uh, some airlines um, don't do it right and good, mm -hmm. or their partners don't do it right, and they question uh, the reason to be or reason to have the boutique on board. Um, and there is not a one-size-fits-all solution mm -hmm. that if we do everything they talk about uh, at the conference here this morning or mm -hmm. so forth, uh, everyone cannot do all of those things, so everyone I think has to look at each specific airline and each specific airline's parameters, business parameters, mm. passengers, routes, planning what they sell, when they fly and so forth. Um, and if you consider that with good competent people and good processes, I totally believe it's a, it's a great income source uh, still for airlines um, for years to come. That's really nice to have you say such positive things about the channel where you know there are there are some disparaging comments being made very public again connected in, in you know with the news that an airline is dropping their in-flight retail so that's really really good to hear you say that uh, one final question for you and I know many suppliers mainly that are trying to break into this market that would would murder me if they if I didn't ask you this so you know they constantly ask us you know how do we put ourselves and our products in front of the people that matter, you know, the, the concessionaires or the companies, you know, the in-flight buyers, basically. And I know you've been asked that many times before, and in your role right now, obviously, they, you would not be the relevant person that they perhaps want to speak to. Maybe a first po point of contact, and then you'd move them on. So how, how would you answer that question? That's a tricky question. Um, and, of course, we get... Uh, I speak to a lot of suppliers who... Mm -hmm. um, complain a little <laughs> bit or whine, but uh, we'll never even get the chance to talk to people who make decisions. I get customers, airlines, who tell me and they can play, there's a fantastic product out there and I, you didn't even present it to us. Um, wow, okay. Yeah, and, 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 but really this is the, the, the tricky part is that somewhere someone has to filter down all these offers that we get and we get so many offers mm. and slowly 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 coming down to something which we think okay this is should be relevant for these airlines or this mm -hmm. region or so we put them together we present to them we get the feedback if good we list them and so forth and during this process somewhere mm -hmm. we miss a, a supplier who would have had a great product because we at, for whatever reason didn't think that it was relevant um, uh, but we have, a, a, I would say, extremely competent uh, purchasing category management team, both within Heinemann and within my airline mm -hmm. team, uh, who are good at filtering these things. And, and, and um, so we don't put the products in front of our customers that are not, won't be uh, good for them. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, uh, they're, they're, I'm sure we miss sometimes mm -hmm. uh, a case. And often I still also come back to this, that many of the suppliers who um, have some remarks on, on that they don't get the chance, mm -hmm. um, okay, maybe partly our, the industry's problem also is that everyone doesn't really understand what it means to be, means to be listed on board an airline mm -hmm. and all the requirements coming back. It's, it is a complex uh, mm -hmm. sales channel. It, it's a difficult one. Not for and the faint hearted, I wouldn't no. say. No, and, and then you come and you know we, we could do a long talk, listing process, meetings, heat, uh, and, and at the end of the day he says, oh, but we can't do that. We can't give you the margins you need, or we can't take the return, so we can't. And they say, well, why are we sitting here? Mm. You, we need to understand mm. 
the requirements in this sales channel. Mm -hmm. But when we do, and many do, where we're sitting here, mm. we're meeting great suppliers who embrace the airline channel. Mm. And when we do, and when we do it right, we, we sell fantastic numbers. Mm. I mean, so, on some of the items that we, we sell, mm. we sell per item by far more than most of the retail stores that we, we run. We don't have the wide assortment, mm -hmm. but when you do get hit the, the sweet spot, mm. then uh, sales are fantastic. Mm. So what's the answer then? What, what is the answer to perhaps helping, helping you with that filtering process even further? Is it perhaps, perhaps the job of the media almost, or as we're business to business, talk to our, our, our readers via you know, our platforms and educate them perhaps more by interviews such as this, you know, it's not an easy channel to work in. It's it, the, the margins, you know, they're, they're difficult to work with and, and so on and so forth, the listing fees and all of that. Is it is it the job of us? Is it the job of yourselves, you know, to get that message out there? So those that, you know, perhaps maybe invest too much or, or get too far in the process without really realizing what it's going to cost them. Yeah, I think we all have, I, I don't have a good answer to this. I, I think we all have a responsibility to to try to evaluate the chances a bit better. Mm -hmm. I mean obviously my team or the Heinemann team uh, we need to invest time and money people in mm -hmm. finding what's new, what's trendy, what could fit. Uh, also maybe then in some cases cut the process quicker because if we understand this is not going to go mm -hmm. anywhere. Uh, but then our partners, our, our, our customers, airline customers they come with, to us often with uh, great ideas. Hey, look at this, and have you heard of that? And we, we try to evaluate mm. it. And, and very often we, we find a good solution that, hey, this is something that they want. We, okay, we weren't aware of it, but by joining forces, we've been uh, able to, to bring on a lot of new brands. Mm. Uh, and then I think it's also, of course, up to the suppliers to find the right mm. channels to, to um, uh, contact us, contact our, our customers, make their brand, their product uh, known. Um, I don't really see that it's media's job to, to do this particular mm -hmm. process. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we're off the hook. Yeah, this one okay. you are, yeah. Okay, that's good to hear. Well, it's been great hearing from you today and uh, thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy, busy schedule and I uh, hope to catch up with you soon. Super, thank you.